So uh, this morning we're gonna get down in the comment section. Hey y'all, good morning. So I'm hanging out in Sunset Park in Brooklyn, New York City with Jack. As you can see, we just took a little walk and I don't know, I hope it's not too noisy or too windy, but I thought maybe this morning I would get down a little bit into the comments section with y'all. Um, if I can, if I can. Yeah, maybe if my phone is working, we'll see. But um, I may do that, I may not. But uh, yeah, I'll probably uh, share some comments. I might share a little bit of this email from, from Isla Mazard, um, which it turns out is not really even his name. I don't wanna go into a big thing, I'm not sure. I'm guessing that he's probably talked about this on his channel, but um, I guess his real name is Benjamin Lord, and, his, uh, and he uh, comes from a family that uh, seemed to be um, in the kind of the art business, in the museum business, not-for-profit sector. Um, uh, I don't know, I, but I found a really cool website that talks about his dad, and uh, apparently his dad recently passed away, so, you know, Eisel, sorry about that, condolences to your family. Um, yeah, so yeah, losing a parent is, is complicated. It's complicated. So, uh, yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about, um, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, what's been happening on the channel. Uh, also, yesterday, um, the People's Climate March uh, in DC, apparently 200,000 people showed up for the march, which is amazing. And I hope that that gives a little bit of hope to folks who maybe feel like people don't care enough about what's happening on the planet, at least in the United States. And just remember, there were 200,000 people in D.C. There were like another 8,000 people in Chicago and another however many people. There were, there, were, there were marches all over the country, and so I don't know what the final toll is, but I'm told there were about 350 marches all over the world, all over the world on six continents. So that's just something to be... I think that's something to be really uh, excited about. Um, yeah, I think that's something to be really excited about and really proud of as a society that we that we care enough universally about what is happening to this planet to at least take some steps, like literal steps, <laughs> to change it. So yeah, that's a lot to be that's a lot to be happy about. I was really um, kind of really interested in, uh, in some of the comments that came yesterday. There were people who had lots of things to say specifically about the um, calling for certain organizations to be very explicit about their nonviolent statements, where that's not something that is universally required. And uh, the one, um, the one comment that I want to call out was from Hawk Epler Zendel, and Hawk commented that. So I'm pulling, I'm just pulling this, these up on my phone. So Hawk said, um, a random assortment of vegan organizations that don't have easily to locate nonviolence clauses in their constitutions, about us pages, value descriptions, inter uh, the International Vegan Union, the Vegan Society. Vegan Outreach, Viral, oh no, no, it's called Viva, uh, Happy Cow, and Mercy for Animals. Uh, and their, their uh, comment was, if Eisel strongly thinks that any activist organization needs a non-violence mission point, uh, point front and center, uh, it would probably be more productive for him to address why this doesn't seem to be the norm in veganism. The movement, he's, the movement he's actually part of and has influence in. So yeah, so I don't know, what do you guys think about that? If, the, if veganism is a movement where people sometimes do engage through violence, do you think that it's important to have, uh, for vegan organizations to have a non-violence statement? What do you think about that? Morning. So there's somebody nearby me doing some, some exercises. So I just, so Jack, come on. Oh. Oh. So, um, so yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think about that. Then, um, 
Yeah, that was that was the one. I mean, people had a lot of things to say about um, about Eisel Mazard in general. People talked about him as being, you know, pretty, you know, toxic. Uh, and and I have to say that I I haven't had a really great experience as a viewer of Eisel Mazard. I was subscribed to his channel for some time, and then you know, after about a week, I just felt exhausted exhausted by him. So um, I do want to share, uh, I kind of feel bad about this, but I do think that it's important to kind of explain to you all why I kind of had to let go. Um, I had to let go. I had to kind of let go of this whole uh, Eisel thing. And um, Yeah, I had to. I had to let go. Um, I had to let go of Eisel because he sent me an email yesterday that left me. F that struck me as a bit arrogant. It said, "Look, man, life is full of surprises. You probably have zero experience discussing the objectives and methods of Black Lives Matter with someone like myself." Now, I don't know what he meant by that. He says, whereas I presume you have a lot of experience discussing it with insincere internet trolls and at the opposite extreme fawning supporters. So just this, this idea that, um, you know, Eisel is making assumptions about who I have conversations with, about Black Lives Matter. Um, you know, I've had conversations about Black Lives Matter from organizers and activists from, you know, St. Louis, from Ferguson. You know, I've had these conversations with many people in Detroit who are, you know, established, you know, activists, longtime activists in, and organizers. And, you know, you guys, I've talked to you about, you know, you know some of the people that I've had the honor of meeting in my life, people like Tony Kushner, people like James Baldwin, people like Grace Lee Boggs. So I've had conversations with some pretty amazing thinkers who, you know, I have put me through my paces. Um, so, uh, you know, this idea that Eisel, I guess, assumes because what? Because of what? <laughs> that I don't have experience having very, you know, invigorating intellectual discussions with with amazing thinkers, amazing minds. And I don't know, I don't know. I don't want to point to anything, but he he's made that assumption. Um, he's made that assumption. And so, you know, I you know, again, Eisel, if you're watching this, I don't know if you're, you know, if you, if you bother, if you'd even bother, but, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry that you have such a low opinion of me, but, uh, it's, you know, it's not, don't worry about me. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I, I will, I will be okay in my life if, uh, if I don't have you as someone to have discussions. Jack is getting really excited because there's other dogs in the park. Anyway, so, so that's kind of what I had to say about that. You know, in, in general, this whole idea of engaging with people, like if you're good with people, you're good with people. Whether you're, you know, an academic or you're, you know, you've got a high school diploma or you're six years old, if you're good with people, you're good with people. And if you're not good with people, it doesn't matter how intelligent you are. If you're not good with people, it doesn't matter how intelligent you are, because you're not you're you're not going to get your message across. You're not going to get your message across, and then your intelligence becomes, I guess, a waste. I guess it's a waste. And so you know, if you start your if you start the conversation insulting the person that you're talking to, and I don't know, maybe he doesn't, maybe he doesn't think of it as an insult. Maybe he doesn't see that that was an insult. But if you start the conversation insulting the person that you're talking to, you might as well, you might as well not say anything. Because I can't hear you now. I'm just, you know, there's, a, there's an arrogant person spouting off again who may say some things that are, that are valid, but it's not helping them to be a better person. And I'm certainly not going to find any happiness <laughs> with that person, right? And engaging with that person. It's going to be a lot of work. So just 
something to think about, something to be aware of. You know, and the same goes with, you know, what, you know, I've talked about this until I'm blue in the face, you know, if your if your approach to vegan activism is, you know, making someone feel deeply ashamed in the first 5 minutes before they trust you, before they know you, before they trust you, before they understand who you are and you expect them to do all of the work to come to an understanding about who you are and what you might mean and why what you're saying is important, then you're just not very good with people. And you're probably not a very good organizer. Which is very different than activism, right? You know, to, you know, paint a huge mural that gets, you know, lots of people to take pictures of it and have it go viral, right? To, to create an image and have it go viral doesn't require you necessarily to be good with people. So your activism could be pretty powerful, but you're not going to be a very good organizer. And I think in many ways, activism without organizing becomes a bit, you know, not pointless, but it's not as useful. Because once you have people engaged, there's got to be a way to get them working in concert with each other at some point, right? At some point. Maybe not. I don't know. I'd like to, I'd like to know what you all think. Cause, you know, certainly I don't have the answers. You know, like I always say, the animals aren't free. The human race isn't even free. So we have a lot of work to do in, in mastering the techniques and strategies for liberation. But until then, I hope that we can at least be somewhat civil, civil with each other. I guess, again, I don't know. What do you think? Again, I don't have a lot of time today. I got so much stuff to do, but it was great coming out into the park with all of you. Um, yeah, do check out the comment section. Uh, check out some of my other videos on this topic. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome, by the way. There's been, you know, about 100 new subscribers in the last, last month, I guess. Last month, I guess. So yeah, welcome, welcome. Uh, so that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourself. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto, it does again.